I started when I was about five years old and I carried cards everywhere that I went and I didn't really know what to do with them, but they just felt right. I mean, early on I would read about all the people I looked up to and you know, that was kind of like my college was finding people that did things that I was really amazed by and then learning as much as I could. In London, I lived in a glass box for 44 days with nothing but water. It was for me one of the most difficult things I'd ever done. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, it's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have an amazing gift inside you that I wanna see exploded onto the world. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from being raised by a single mom and getting his start as a street performer to setting multiple world records and being recognized as one of the greatest magicians of all time. He's David Blaine, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy! All right, let's kick things off with rule number one, find your path. You believe that you see the card and you actually believe that you see me place the card inside, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. It's always gonna be right here. Let me show you again, look. So it looks, no but look. No but watch, because it's an optical illusion so you know what I'm doing. So look, you see the card here and then you really believe that it's going inside, right? No, it's an optical illusion, it's always right here. <laughs> When was the first time that you knew that you saw magic, how did it influence your life? Like how did, how did that start? I started when I was about five years old and I carried cards everywhere that I went and I didn't really know what to do with them but they just felt right. So it's like you learn all these little moves with the cards and in the hands they just feel good. So I didn't know that that existed. And then a librarian when I was really little walked me through a self-working mathematical trick. I did it to my mother and she reacted like it was incredible. And then I started to love performing because you would get the reaction. So part of it is just how it feels in the hands. Another part is math, logic, science, and then the other part is the performance aspect. So all of those are very addicting. See how the cards kind of just move across, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I do that really fast, you won't see it. So look, I'll do it with this card really fast. With the nine of diamonds, I just shoot. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. See the nine shoots wow. right there? Yeah. Magic. Rule number two, make it happen. So at 18, I think it was, uh, and I, I don't know if this was a milestone or not, but you, I believe this is when you jumped a turnstile, got in some trouble for that? Yeah. Could you tell so people I, I about was this? Doing, I was doing magic in restaurants, and it started as a waiter where I would do magic, and then I, people wanted to come back and just see me doing magic, so I started walking up and down Park Avenue and trying to get different fancy restaurants to hire me, not hire me, let me do magic to the people that were dining and then they would tip me. As I started doing that, I started getting hired by wealthy New Yorkers to do their parties and things like that. One night I, was, I jumped over a turnstile and that's when Giuliani was sweeping everybody. So I, I got locked up, but as I was going there, I kept breaking out of the cuffs for the cops, so they liked cops it. Cops love that, by the way. I'm kidding. They, no. they actually do. Oh, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. I had to pause. So you're like, hey guys, these aren't working. I mean, how do they, how do they respond to that? Yeah, no, no, they, 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 they're all good. I don't, they, they know that I'm not really a threat, but I'm, you know, so it's going to, anyways. They, they know they just have to go through the motions. Yeah, so I get put in central booking and central booking is crazy. It's like everybody's in and out of Rikers. So it's like a tough room and you're being moved from one cell to another and there's like 40 guys in there. And I'm like, oh man, I'm going to get my ass kicked. <laughs> So I, they're the four biggest guys are sitting on the ground playing spades. So I walk up to them and grab the deck of cards from them. And I'm like, let me show you something. Like, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're ready to, ready to, to kill me. Yeah. And I start doing magic. And then what happened was they started to go crazy. And these are the toughest guys in the cell. So then the whole cell is around me, you know, 30 guys or 20 some guys all going crazy. And then the guards come in. And they, everybody was reacting to me doing that. Like they were all going crazy again. I was like, whoa. So these people on Park Avenue, these super powerful people, and then in prison, 
these guys, the reactions are so amazing and so similar. I want to show that. So that became the impetus for the first TV show, which was called Street Magic. You know the guys that do Three Car Money, right? Right. Mm. All right, this is that game for you right now. Not for me, bro. No, 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 no money. No money. It's to just pretend. Instead of three cards, you say, hold your fingers like this. Sir. Hold your fingers like this. Look, watch. This card, right? Remember diamonds. Forget ace, just diamonds. Hold it parallel. What card do you have? What? What card is that? Can I look at it? Yeah, to, yeah but name it. Name it. What is it? Ace, diamonds. Diamonds, just diamonds. Look, show it to them. Make sure it's all right. Bingo. All right, bango. show it to them, too. Bingo, bango. That's bingo, right. bango. Cool, yeah. man. Hold it like this. Look. Lower, 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 watch. This one, same thing, just remember hearts. Forget ace, just right, hearts. Right. Watch this switch, ready? Uh -huh. See, I switched it, look, I'll do it again. See it switch back, just switch twice so quick you didn't Sorry. see it. I'm gonna walk my shoe, huh? All right, oh. all right. <laughs> yeah, it switched twice. Look, I'll do it so so you can see it. Look, here's the move. See how the borders line up? Don't put it on the bottom. No, but look, no, I'm, I'm teaching you. I know I'm teaching. I'm teaching you right now. Teach That's how I do it. Hold yeah. it tight, though, to make it impossible now. Because you know the move. I have diamonds. Ready? Right. Without looking at it, what would you bet on? Hearts or diamonds? I'm betting. You got a All right, but pretend bet. Would you bet hearts here or hearts here? Or could I impress you if the heart was on top, diamond was on bottom? The heart's on top because you had the heart. Turn your hand over. Nope. Go ahead. Turn your hand over. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number three, never quit. Have you ever done a trick that didn't work? Almost every single one. <laughs> in, in front of people? Like no, no, no. I that mean, failed, something that no, failed. The, well, front. the good news about doing magic is, and I think like rappers too, it's like you, you, you never know where the end is because it's up to him. So it's you, you can keep improvising and, and going. So there's never a, a failure unless you quit. So if you keep going, there's not a failure. You just keep changing and moving. Rule number four, challenge yourself. As a magician, I try to create images that, that make people stop and think. I also try to challenge myself to do things that doctors say are not possible. I was buried alive in New York City in a coffin, buried alive in a coffin in April 1999 for a week. I lived there with nothing but water. And it ended up being so much fun that I decided I could pursue doing more of these things. The next one is I froze myself in a block of ice for three days and three nights in New York City. That one was way more difficult than I had expected. The one after that, I stood on top of a 100-foot pillar for 36 hours. I began to hallucinate so hard that the buildings that were behind me started to look like big animal heads. So next I went to London. In London I lived in a glass box for 44 days with nothing but water. It was for me one of the most difficult things I'd ever done, but it was also the most beautiful. There were so many skeptics, especially the press in London, that uh, they started flying cheeseburgers on helicopters around my box to tempt me. <laughs> so I felt very validated when the New England Journal of Medicine actually used the research for science. Rule number five, be fearless. So when I was 19 or 20 or something like that, I was, I was at the airport and my bag was missing and I saw a whole bunch of identical bags coming out and there was all these guys dressed in identical jumpers and I was like I think you guys have one of my bags because I have the exact same bag it was a Tumi bag they said go go ask him knock on the window and it was a limousine a white limo parked out front with tinted windows and I knock on the window and the thing rolls down and Mike Tyson's there with his fist up he's like you got a problem <laughs> <laughs> and I was like and I was like holy shit. No, Mike, you're like my favorite person, and I grew up, and da da da, you know. So um, he says, jump in. So, yeah. I ju so I jump in the limo with him, and we drive to the hotel he's staying at, and in and I'm doing magic to him, and it's it's amazing. And along the way, he says to me, he says, you know, I wasn't supposed to be the heavyweight champ. He's like, I didn't have, I wasn't tall enough, I didn't have long arms. He's like, but I had nothing to lose. And when you have nothing to lose, you have everything to gain. And I was kind of like, that was like another like <laughs> great piece of information from Mike Tyson. <laughs> Rule number six, this is a little bit of a gross one. Amaze your customers. This is my right hand. This is a hand that I use to do everything. This is an ice pick. 
This hasn't been switched in or out. This has been here the whole time. Is that true? Yeah. Do you want to uh, make sure it's actually what it seems to be? Oh. No, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely what it seems to be. Yeah, it is. This is complete mind over body. really looks like it's going through the hand yeah and does it really look like it's actually it is yeah oh really? god no oh it looks like wow. it's actually going in but there's no blood see this is ultimately what they want to see Kanye see that look ultimately in magic that's what people care about it's that see <laughs> See, that's really what they want to see. Yeah. Wow. 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 You can see the pressure. There's no blood. Why? This is the part that could be messy, by the way. Do you want to just feel it? Make sure it's actually not an illusion coming. Man, I lost my erection entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you pull it like this. Pull it straight out. Go ahead, grab it and just pull it right out. Good. Good. You just pull that. Go ahead. Just pull. Oh. Pull. Oh. Pull. Ninja skills. <laughs> Just hold me steady. Pull. Go ahead. Pull. 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 Done. Nothing. Oh. No man. blood. Nothing. Like I promised. <laughs> it went through your hand. It feels There's like it went through your hand. This is not a glove. That doesn't retract. Oh my god. <laughs> Man, I was having a pretty trap day. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire life, obviously. Um, um, I can't even. You're out of your mind in the most. Uh, <laughs> You're just out of your mind um, in the most beautiful way um, possible. That is my amazing. God. Rule number seven, go with the flow. If I said to reach in your bag right now and there was a ham sandwich, you'd be like, oh, wow, that's a cool trick. How did, how did he get the sandwich in my bag, right? But if he said I was hungry right now, I'd really love a sandwich. And then you said reach in your pocket, and now there's a ham sandwich there. Then it's not a trick, then it's something much more interesting. And that's really the concept for great magic. I think it's about timing, it's about interacting and being able to, to, to go with the flow. Rule number eight, find mentors. One of the best things Brian taught me there, he was, he was an early mentor to me. One of the quotes that his dad gave to him is, always surround yourself with people that will inspire you or help you grow. And that was just a great piece of advice from him. I took that very seriously and pursued people that I looked up to or that I admired and, and, and tried to learn things from them. Since I didn't have really, you know, a father figure or anything like that. I mean, early on, I would 
read about all the people I looked up to. And, you know, that was kind of like my college was finding people that did things that I was really amazed by and then learning as much as I could. And, and then what I started doing is I started finding all the books on Nobel Prize winners and then in literature specifically. And then I would read what books they recommended and then I would read the books that they recommended and then on the back of that book it would be what this book was influenced by. So I started going through lots of that stuff. Rule number nine, work hard. I'm actually friends with Copperfield. Okay. I, yeah. Okay. I, I get phone calls from sometimes at like 3 a.m. Yeah. about nothing. <laughs> like, okay. David, <laughs> yeah, what are we going to do about this thing? I'm like, what do you mean? You know, and, and then he'll have this whole idea for something that's insane that should be done in magic, but it's always brilliant. So the guy, you know, I think everybody works pretty hard. I think yeah. to be a magician, it looks really easy. Mm -hmm. Like you think what Copperfield does is he walks out there and it's, you know, he does it. But that guy works harder than anybody I know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he really, really works. And it's hard. That guy's most most shows that you guys see, it's like people do like two hundred and seventy a year or something. Yeah. Um, last year Copperfield did six hundred shows. And rule number ten, the last one before some very special bonus clips, and my personal favorite, master your craft. Think of any card in the deck. Great. Um ho hold the deck. You're thinking of a card? Do I know what card you're thinking of? <laughs> your card just left the deck just now. Look through the deck, your card isn't there. Go ahead, look. Yeah, it's not there. You won't see it there. No, it's nowhere. Here's what we'll do. So do me a favor. Grab a grab a piece of grab a piece of fruit for me, like a one that we can open up. Yeah, grab a piece of fruit. Good, whatever. And is there? Can we can we cut this? Can we can we take a knife and put it right there? Yeah, yeah. Can we put it right here. Say your card out loud. Nine of hearts. Nine of hearts. Yeah. Can you turn this sideways? Yes, yeah, so I can cut right through it. Let me not hit your hand. Let's do. Hold. Yeah. See inside. See there's. See how there's a card in the orange. No way. See how there's one card inside. Please remove it. <laughs> Take it out. Go ahead. Pull it out. Open it up, Harrison. No, that's, no, no, that's just crazy. Get the out of my house. Okay. Whoa. Now I've got two very special bonus clips from David Blaine on how to chunk things down and love what you do. But before that, I wanna know what did you learn from this video? What is your commitment of the day? Don't just watch another video, take some action. What is that going to be? You watch this video right down below the action that you are going to change in your business or in your life. I'm really curious to find out. Thank you so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon, and enjoy the bonus clips. What is your secret reserve of strength when you feel that your body or mind can't push through? That's, that's a really good question. So what I, what I do is uh, a lot of it is based on numbers. So I create, and, and, I, and I run it across the board. So it's like if I'm, if I'm gonna run a 10K, I make sure that I get not just to the 6.2, but I'll go always further, like maybe to seven, or I'll pick a number that's important. And then I have these superstitions that if I don't get to this number, something terrible is gonna happen. So by committing to this, this almost superstition that's, that's based on numbers, you can use you know, the halfway mark, like, okay, I'm going to get to 22 days of a fast, but I know I have 44 days. So first I reach the 22 day mark and then I start counting backwards. I said, but I already did half. So that half is, so now I could pretend I'm starting fresh. So I have 22 days to go. So let me get through another 11 days. Let me get through. And, and it's just, it's basically just breaking it down 
in, in little chunks, but making sure that you get to that finish line. So didn't you do something or have a very similar superstition when you were a kid in school, really, like your school bus? You have to do certain things, uh, like pull a leaf off a tree or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, or yeah, something yeah, terrible yeah, happened. Yeah, okay. yeah, I would stop and there'd be a leaf that was just out of reach when you jump and I'd, I'd just keep jumping and jumping and then I have to put something down until I got that, just little things. But it's weird because when, when I, for me, it was almost like training because I'd set a goal that was very difficult and then I just wouldn't quit until I got it. And part of it was the superstition of doing this ridiculous thing that has no meaning, but just not quitting until it's done. Why do you love doing this so much? What is it that motivates you to do this? It's so many f different things, but one of my favorite things is even though I act like I'm not reacting when I'm done doing magic and you see people reacting, I live off of their reactions. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, when, like when, sh when she just went screwed, that's what I live for. So I play it pretty casual, but I love seeing people light up or, or, or just be become pretty, you know, raw. And then the other thing about it is a digital fixation, like a love of just playing with cards mm -hmm. and manipulating things. And then also learning new things that seem impossible but actually how to do them so it's, it's there's so many levels to it so let me give you the one word secret to happiness one word this is all you need to be happy the most important word ever if you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to know what the most important one word is for Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Oprah Winfrey, Will I Am, and Howard Schultz, I have a very special secret video for you. Check the description for details.